Hi, this is Andrew. Thanks for joining me. This video covers the basis of an ARP spoofing or poisoning attack using EtherCap. This is based on Activity 6.2 from the Pentest Plus book. Um, for those of you in the Cisco CCNA2 class, it will show you what dynamic ARP inspection can uh, or is designed to prevent. And um, for those of you in the Pentest class, uh, you'll see why um, based on dynamic ARP inspection, why it wasn't working in, AWS, in our AWS environment. But you can see how it's supposed to work and see what it's supposed to do. Um, I'm going to start by showing you the three systems that are involved. So I'm using a Windows 10 client and that IP address ends in 38 and we have a MAC address here, 60FA3D. Then what you see here is the, and actually let's verify that, IP config all. So if we just go into IP config all, we can see here is the, the IP address 192.168.18.38. That's the client. And the physical address is 60FA3D. So that's our Windows client. Now we also have a Kali system. This is running in VirtualBox Bridge. So it's going to be uh, directly, it's going to look like it's directly connected to the network. And if we run IPA on that and pull up our Word document again, we have our Kali Linux system is 192.168.18.104. And our hardware address, Ethernet address, is ends in 16.48.42. Now we also have a file server, and that file server is right here, 192.168.18.180. And according to our Windows ARP table, we can do an ARP A, and we can see that that 180 is 0569D7. That's right there. So we have three systems. The idea is we're going to use EtherCap to be a man in the middle. Right now, if my client tried to copy something directly to the uh, file server, it would just go directly to the file server. Kali wouldn't be aware of it because the switch would receive it on one port, send it out on an, uh, another port, and Kali would never see what's going on. So the whole point of this is to become a man in the middle or do a man in the middle attack to be able to read the traffic that's going between the two systems. So we're gonna use EtherCap for that. Uh, first step is launching EtherCap and it's under sniffing and spoofing EtherCap and I need to put in a password to launch it. So we have at our cap. Um, the way it's set up, uh, I'm gonna turn off start sniffing and start up because we don't really need that yet. And then we can accept. That's really all there is here. We can start sniffing by hitting the, uh, the, the play button. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the menu. That's where they moved things now. But first thing we're gonna do is just try to scan the network, see what's out there. We have a list of 23 hosts. We wanna look at that list, so we go here. Now we have 38. That is the client. 192.168.18.38, that MAC address matches. That's gonna be target one. Then we're gonna go down to 180. And let's see that MAC address, that's uh, 192.168.18.180. That's the file server, and that MAC address matches 0569D7. So we're gonna make that target two. Now we have to talk about what we want to actually do. We're gonna start the sniffing process. We're going to do an ARP poisoning man in the middle attack, and ARP poisoning victims, and we're going to now look at our ARP table on the Windows 10 system. If you look before, it was 0569D7. Now we're gonna repeat the command. And now 180 is saying 164842. So this Kali system is a man in the middle. Now what's next? We are going to actually capture the data that's going over the network. One of the things that that'll do, or that'll allow us to see what is transferred between them. So why use, why am I at a command prompt instead of Wireshark? Wireshark would work here because I have a full virtual machine. In our AWS environment, it does not work because we have, um, 
we're kind of uh, limited in, in the way it's running. So we use T Shark. So I'm going to use T Shark now, which is command line version. So W, and I'm going to capture to, I just need to put in a file. We're going to call it capture. So now I am capturing everything on this Kali system, which remember that includes things going between my Windows computer and uh, my file server. So what I'm going to do is I have a folder on here and I'm going to put a text file here and then I'm going to put a picture here. And that took a second to copy. So I just copied two things over and that obviously put a lot of traffic through this Kali system. And if I tried to, if you just want to see, I can ping my file server as well. 18180 and it is getting replies. Now, look at those replies. They are just a touch slower than you might expect on a normal network. So I'm going to do an ARP A again and we see 180 is still 164842. That's our Kali Linux system. So I'm going to stop the man in the middle attack now. Stopping the man in the middle attack. Um, stop sniffing. I'm actually going to shut down Ettercap. Um, I'm going to also stop the capturing data because I just don't need that anymore. So if I run ARPA again, 180 is back to 0569D7. It's now communicating directly with the file server. And let's see if I can if you look at the ping now, we are now all sub one millisecond on all of those. Notice before when I um, when I was when I was pinging, we were nine milliseconds, thirteen, nine, thirteen, because it was going through um, ultimately a virtual machine, but it was going through another system. So now we have a capture file out as a directory that I created. So what we're going to do is try to get some of that data that we copied between these two systems out of that capture file. So we're going to do T shark and dash R on the capture file. Then we're going to export objects. And we want it to be anything that was transferred to SMB and we want to do out. So that's going to say anything that was SMB uh, make a copy of it, put it into the uh, to the out directory. And that just this is going through everything that was transferred between the two. Now, if we change to the out directory and we do uh, an ls, do an ls, we have um, recycle. That was just kind of information that was transferred over. But we have our text file and we have our JPEG file. Let's start by looking at our text file. So we can do that from right here. We're going to do percent five C test, and we're just going to cat. And what do we have here? Uh, of course, we have um, the beginning of Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, which if I open the text file, that's what we had there, part one. So we just intercepted a text file. Now, uh, let's actually look at the... Um, at the JPEG and see if we can see what the JPEG was. So if we um, we're going to copy it to a location that I can access from the account that's logged into Kali. So I'm copying that file to home Andrew downloads. So now if I go to my home directory here um, we have a downloads directory and we have the picture. And this is the picture that I copied. This was from my Windows system and there it is. So you can see um, just by using Ettercap, we can intercept traffic going between two systems. Um, and that is obviously a huge security concern uh, so that is where the dynamic ARP inspection comes in. Uh, there are other utilities, other tools, but from a pen test perspective, if you find the network that's not running these things, you can get yourself in the middle of any connection 
and anything that's not encrypted, we can, uh, we can actually intercept and look at. So that's all I have for you. <laughs> that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.